At the Hiram M. Chittenden Locks in Ballard, we see all kinds of boats and ships coming through every day. Some of these are visiting shipyards along the Lake Washington Ship Canal, where they get refitted and repaired. I'm Katie McGilvery, and I work for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. As part of our centennial, we teamed up with a local film teacher and his students to tell stories about our history and impact on Seattle. And this year is our centennial, so we're 100 years old. Maritime industry is a big part of that story. So today we'll be visiting several historic shipyards along the Lake Washington Ship Canal. And we even get to climb aboard one of the most interesting and unusual vessels that ever came through the locks. So here we go. So when I was young, there was a sound you'd hear almost constantly all around Ballard and the Ship Canal. It was this wonderful little clink, clink, clink of mallets driving oakum between planks of wooden boats to make them watertight. It was a sound that told you boats were being built, boats were being repaired, and things were generally getting ship shape on the waterfront. You don't hear that sound too often anymore, but there are plenty of other sights and sounds that remind us of how important maritime industries are to Seattle's economy, its history, and its character. Shipyards and boatyards have been a big part of the story of the Lake Washington Ship Canal, and they continue to be a vital part of that story today. You only need to look at a map of Puget Sound to realize why boats are such a big deal around here. For most of its history, this area was covered with heavy forest, so waterways were just about the only way to get around. When European settlers began arriving, one of the first sounds they would have heard was the thunk, thunk, thunk of adzes in the hands of Native Americans carving canoes from solid logs. A lot of settlers who came to Seattle, and especially Ballard, were boat builders and fishermen from the Nordic countries of Europe. Even before the locks and the ship canal were built, Salmon Bay was ringed with boatyards and shipyards, including the Ballard Marine Railway Company. Known today as Pacific Fishermen, this yard now specializes in repairing and maintaining many kinds of vessels with an amazing mix of new technology and traditional wooden boat crafts. Welcome to Pacific Fisherman Shipyard. This has been a shipyard since 1870. A fellow named Saunderson and a bunch of other Norwegians had it. And uh, they built uh, steamboats uh, like the Bailey Gatzert were built here back in the 1870s. This is the uh, helm from a standard minesweeper, um, 120 footers that were built here during the war, about a series of 10 of them. Two of these went on to be famous, John Wayne's Wild Goose oh, yeah. and uh, Jacques Cousteau's Eclipso, built right on the railway out here, we're gonna see in a minute. And over here, uh, John, we have a rather famous vessel, the Northwind, that we're doing some uh, refit work to it. The Northwind was built in 1930 and in a Wisconsin area and went over uh, during the war and Winston Churchill took it over for MI-9 service. So, yeah, so we got John Wayne, Winston Churchill yeah. and Jacques Cousteau. So. All in one shipyard. Yeah. So in 1946, after the war, this was still the Ballard Marine Railway and uh, 400 Norwegian uh, heritage fishermen and their wives wanted a place to fix their boats, so the 400 of them plunked down $300 each and uh, decided to have a co-op and they purchased it from the Ballard Marine Railway as a co-op. Most of those 400 original shareholders are uh, around today on the third and fourth generation of ownership. John, if you take a look around, you'll see a lot of salt cod hanging around this joint. We get uh, the fishermen are always yeah. bringing us salt cod down. Yeah, they, yeah. they salt them in the lazarette and they give them to us and we just put that in a pail of water. Uh, soak the salt out of it and we have a nice uh, afternoon snack. There you go. Okay, where we're going now, John, is uh, this is the sacred territory. Oh, yeah. uh, is this the Oakham Loft here? That's right, yeah. So this is where the Corkers, yeah. the Corkers are the shipwrights, and the Corkers are famous for having uh, their little mallet and they have uh, corking irons. Yeah. And this is this sound, oh baby, that's the famous sound that you hear whenever anybody's making a wooden boat watertight. That's oakum, often called hemp. It's the male version of marijuana yeah. that is uh, made and used for uh, 
for hundreds and hundreds of years for, for uh, making uh, ships watertight. Right. This is our ship chandlery store. Uh, we have every nut and bolt known to man here. Walking around Pacific Fisherman with Doug Dixon feels a lot like visiting a museum, but this is truly a living museum and much more than just a museum, actually. It's a place where the past, the present, and the future really come together in the ongoing story of Seattle's maritime industry. Just across the water at the south end of the Ballard Bridge, another venerable yard is helping keep Seattle's oldest fishing vessels going strong. The yard is called Fishing Vessel Owners Marine Ways. It's in the heart of Fisherman's Terminal, which has been around even longer than the locks and the ship canal. The terminal opened in 1914 after local fishermen lobbied the Port of Seattle to give them a permanent home. Today the terminal is the winter port for many vessels in the Alaska fishing fleet who come here to dock in fresh water and take advantage of all sorts of amenities including the marine ways. Many kinds of fishing vessels are hauled out here, but there's one group that's very special. It's a fleet of wooden halibut schooners, many of which are over 100 years old and have been coming here for repair their entire lives. So Leif, uh, we got a boat that's just about 100 years old and a shipyard that's about 100 years old coming out of a ship canal that is about 100 years old. And there's a lot of things that are 100 years old that aren't looking so good. Um, I guess what you do here is part of the reason they're still around. That's right, yeah, that's uh, companies maintain most of these boats their whole lives. You know, it's amazing the technology that they came up with a hundred years ago or better still works. Right. And, it, and we maintain all this equipment here. Uh, this winch room, the building, is probably a hundred years old also. And this, uh, this equipment, we believe, came from a logging camp someplace. Uh -huh. We've got uh, a control station with rheostats and with a handle that actually came out of a streetcar in Seattle. This is how we control the speed of the winch drums and hence the cradles as they're uh, coming up out of the water. That's amazing. Looks like something out of Thomas Edison or, or you know, Dr. Frankenstein. But The guys engineered it and it worked well and I don't know if they ever envisioned it lasting this long, but it does. And one of the reasons it's lasted this long is because our craftsmen in the machine shop uh, maintain this stuff for us. And that's what this yard's been doing. Uh, for almost a hundred years. It's actually a, a, a living piece of history. When the locks on the ship canal were built, Salmon Bay went from being salt water to fresh water and was no longer subject to the tides. This was a big benefit to shipyards here, but farther inland, the impact of the canal was even bigger. Boatyards and shipyards began springing up all along the canal, and for several decades, Lake Union became a major center for boat building on the west coast of the United States. Well, this is Lake Union Dry Dock Company. We're one of Seattle's oldest businesses. It started here a couple years after the locks were built, 1919. We started out here building yachts, uh, particularly a yacht that had a raised front deck, a raised fore deck. They called it a raised deck cruiser and it became very popular and the founder decided he wanted to capitalize on that so he wanted to go into the business of building these yeah. boats and so they bought this property built some dry docks and went to work and quickly grew to building yachts beautiful yachts over a hundred feet long and by 1929 we were building things such as the wt preston okay and wow. you know the wt preston yeah. Yeah, the Preston is a pretty famous Corps of Engineers boat that they use to, to pull snags. Just the other day I got to talk with a gentleman that had walked onto the boat in 1953 and worked on it until the early 1980s. Oh man, that was in service a long time. Yeah. And it's still in service as a museum. <laughs> exactly, yeah. This piece of equipment is 100 years old too and over 100 years old, and it's fully functional, and it's also okay as far as OSHA is concerned. It's OSHA compliant. And there's not too many pieces of equipment that are 100 years old and OSHA. How could anybody cut their finger off with that little thing? <laughs> <laughs> their leg maybe, but not their finger. <laughs> so what, what all were you doing to this vessel? 
Um, they sandblasted the whole thing, painted it. Lake Union Dry Dock has a lot of big equipment, but the biggest thing in the yard is Dry Dock Number 8, which has a very special connection to the Ballard Locks. It actually began its career as a floating dry dock for the Navy during World War II, a long way from Lake Union. This was built in the early part of 1944, okay. just about a year before the right. war ended. Right. That was originally designed to go to sea okay. and be self-contained in okay. dry dock vessels at sea, working above Australia, Guam, and the Admiralty Islands. Inside the wing walls, there were uh, staterooms, galley, and walk-in refrigerator, walk-in freezer, machine shops, stuff like that. It was fully self-contained with the crew and everything. In 1975, a company called Marine Power and Equipment bought the floating dry dock, which by then had been named the White Sands. They wanted her for their North Lake Union shipyard, and of course, this meant bringing her through the Ballard Locks. Now the locks are wide, 80 feet to be exact, but unfortunately the white sands was wider by about a foot. So bringing her through was an engineering feat that almost rivaled the building of the locks themselves. It really was quite an event when it came through the locks. The word went out in the community of Ballard that, hey, something interesting is going through the locks and everybody came down. They shut the doors in their offices and came down to see it coming through. Yeah. yeah. After it came through the locks in 1975, it went to work for Marine Power and Equipment, and uh, we looked over there jealously. Uh, <laughs> and so, in 1995, we bought okay. the dock, and we brought it over here, yeah. and we've been keeping it busy ever since, I yeah, can tell you. that's great. It, it doesn't have much rest. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, this is 1940s technology. This is state-of-the-art for, for 1940s. This is where I'm at when I uh, dock or undock a vessel. Okay. Um, open all my valves and everything right from, right from here. Right. We dry dock all kinds of boats here. Um, Army, Coast Guard, Navy, fishing boats. We can dock up to 420 feet worth of boats here. And lots of times we put two boats up at the same time. We've been averaging about 150 employees plus some subcontractors. So yeah. it's a going business and they're good family wage job. Right. right. This has been just a real boon to Seattle yeah. having the locks here and being able to get these boats in here. Although business is booming at these shipyards, one of the biggest challenges they face these days is getting skilled labor. Fortunately, Seattle Central College and other organizations offer maritime training right here on the Ship Canal and Lake Union. This is our wood shop here. It's pretty typical of your traditional small shops that would have been on the lake, you know, 75 years ago. One very special organization in this category is the Center for Wooden Boats, in whose boat shop I'm sitting right now. With a cozy wood stove burning, well-sharpened hand tools and wood shavings all around, this place is boat rights heaven. These boats were built here um, in classes um, in the early 90s at the Center for Wooden Boats um, to teach people traditional woodworking skills. Okay. And then we use the boats in our fleet. Basically, um, anyone in the general public can come down here and rent a boat and go out in one. And we also have quite a few volunteers that come through in exchange for their time to get free boat rentals by coming down here and sanding for us. You'd trust me with a piece of sandpaper on one of these things and then I could come down and uh, take the kids out. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's great. <laughs> Would you like to give it a try? Uh, yeah, you right. know, I, uh, I, I did work at um, Marco Shipyard for many years, but on new construction steel boats and worked around a lot of guys who spun oakum in the afternoon and yeah. the oakum loft and, you know, did a lot of uh, hammering fuzz, I think as we called it. And, uh, and, but they would never let me near their tools. These things are kind of sacred artifacts. And so I tapped my thumbnail a few times. I mean, there's no doubt that shipyards and boatyards helped bring prosperity to Seattle over the years and continue to do that. Ironically, that very prosperity is threatening shipyards and other maritime industries here as people compete for space on the waterfront. As we commemorate the centennial of the Ship Canal, it's a good time to recognize the importance of our maritime industries and traditions 
and to salute the people who are working hard to keep them strong. This is our community, this is our fishing village here, and it's extremely important to maintain it and to recognize it and to honor it. Thank you.